5, very near the end of, what's well, not really a letter, 5, very near the sermon. end of, What's not really a letter? Five. It's one of very near the end of among the letters. What's not really a letter? Five. One of very near the end of among the letters. What's not really a letter? Five. One of very near the end of among the letters. What's not really a letter? Five. One of very near the end of among the letters. What's not really a letter? Five. One of very near the end of among the letters. What's not really a letter? Five. One of very near the end of Good and faithful servant. And we're going to continue along those lines good by and looking at servant. First John continue tonight, along which those lines so many good by looking at servant. assurance. First John continue caveat, along which those lines so good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those lines good and faithful servant. First John continue along those See Clark and Lauren back there, deep in conversation. I see Clark and Lauren back there, deep night? in conversation. I see Clark. We'll start with y'all. <laughs> well, tonight we're, we're going to give her a 100% chance. So you just come forward. You got a pool. I know. I want to hear what you all have to say. I don't know how many times I have talked to people over the years, members of the church who have been Christians for decades, and they live in abject fear about their soul salvation. And I would like to chip away at that tonight. I believe God wants us to know with confidence, living our lives, that we are heaven bound. Sierra, has a better chance. Sierra? well, I, I want to hear from these guys because uh, Cody is only giving uh, Jenny a, an 80% chance of making it. So, all right, what you got?
Okay, well, I like that answer. You're not confident in yourself. You're confident in God. So do you have moments when you think to yourself, am I really going to make it to heaven? But you, why? Because you just said you have confidence in God. Karen? Okay. No, no, that's a good answer. Um, yeah, I know, a lot of contingencies. Uh, have you ever had this thought? You, you live perfectly all your life, and you, you, uh, you get in a fight with your wife, and then you get hit by a car, and you're dead. And that's the end, and, and that's, you got, you got that's, sin in your life. That's not how uh, God described the faithful servant. Okay. All right, so no last-minute sins um, right there at the end. What do you all have? You're talking about us and we. You. Nikki has a, a 90% chance. Faith is very involved in uh, how we live our lives. And if we're faithful, that means we want to believe in God, keep believing. All right. Confident in in God's faithfulness and your faithfulness. Remember your faith and remember your confidence. Where, where is your faith and where is your confidence? In Christ. Okay, in Christ. And, and in Christ. Christ is in me. Um, the, this coming Sunday, that this actually dovetails with our study in Romans, Romans chapter three, because he's going to talk about how when when God condemns, He's still bringing glory to Himself. When He saves, He is He is glorified in that as well. God is just. He is the righteous judge. And yet he is the compassionate judge. Can God sweep sin under the carpet and say, well, that's okay. Let me just pat you on the head. Don't do that again. Everything's fine. No. We, we, would, we would, I hope, all agree that God is not going to justify sin without repentance, without uh, the blood of Jesus. Well, okay. So you're. I can say 100%. But that's not the question. I know, but I'm trying to answer it. You're, you're, that's the first step into going that direction. Okay. I mean, do you live in fear? Thinking there's a, always a possibility I may not make it. God does not want you to have that feeling. He is not out to get you. In fact, 2 Peter 3, verse 9, what does it say? God is not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want anyone to be saved from him for eternity. Nobody. Yes, sir. First John 1, uh, 6 or 7. All right. So, so what, what I'm hearing... So, if you're constantly trying to be right, 
Okay. Okay. What, what I'm hearing is we've got a lifelong process here, and God is working with us. He's not working against us. That's one thing I want to establish. You keep, keep wiping your forehead there, I'm going to think you're raising your hands. You better be careful. But you are raising your hands, sir. Okay, faith without works is dead. Okay. You know, there, there are folks who believe that once you're saved, you're always saved. So why should I even bother doing good works? Wouldn't you like to have that very comforting doctrine in your heart? Oh, I, I, I can't fall. But there are so many passages in Scripture that warn us that we can fall. I, I want to look at uh, 1 John 5, uh, verses 11 through 13 with you. But I'm going to start, you don't, don't turn to it, it's on the screen, and John 20, verse, verses 30 and 31, you can probably recite, as, as John gives us his summary of his gospel. Many other signs Jesus performed in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these, these signs, are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of John wants us to believe, to truly believe, to embrace Jesus as God in the flesh and have eternal life. Notice some of the parallels between John 20, specifically John 20, 31, and 1 John 5, verse 13. And uh, what are some of the connections you see between them? I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. What are some of the parallels you see there between those verses? All right, I am writing here. These things I'm writing, these signs, I write these things. This is at the end of 1 John. He's talking about the whole, the whole sermon that he's presented here. What else? All right, you've got the idea of belief. You're going in the order that, uh, that I have it. Look how many times you got belief in the Gospel of John. We said nearly a hundred times. You've got the verb believe or to have faith, and that's what we were talking about tonight. And 1 John 5, verse 13, sure enough, has, has believing in there as well. What else? Life, that you may have life in his name. What I have next is uh, the emphasis on the Son of God. I mean, I tried. I tried hoping that we would go in the, right, in the, the order here. But you see there's an emphasis on Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God in John 20, 31. And then he talks about the Son of God. So some specific language there. And then uh, life, we're going to get to it. But look, I, I'm just highlighting these here where he's got this, this wish tense here. You may, I want, I'm hoping, I, 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 you will, you, you may. This may be. What you want. And so what is it in John 20, 31 he wants us to, to have? He wants us to have that belief. He wants he us wants, to. But he also wants us to have that communion. Ma'am? He wants us to have that communion. So is, is it that you may, it's contingent upon us. Okay. And what is it contingent upon us to do? To believe. Exactly. To believe. That by believing you may have life. In 1 John 5, verse 13, what is it he wants you to may have? 
to have eternal life to know that you have eternal life do you see do you see the difference now i mean i'm not going to give you a d minus for for saying it's it's about eternal life we want to know that we have eternal life but it's so that we can know with certainty john 20 31 says i've written this gospel because i want you to believe in jesus to be the son of god and that by believing you may have life he takes it a step further in first john and he says you already believe that jesus is the christ great you have eternal life i want you to know you have eternal life do you think people doubted in the first century just like people in the 21st century grapple with wanting to believe against all hope they can go to heaven Okay, in the Revelation, all right. And of those seven churches, two of them were faithful, had nothing disparaging said about them. Um, four had issues, one of them had nothing good said about them at all. Nothing good at all. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, is everyone going to heaven? The seven billion people on this planet, how many are going to heaven? One, one person came up to Jesus and said, why is it that few will be saved? And Jesus' answer basically was, <laughs> you, you may not even be saved. <laughs> Um, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, Raul, did you have a hand up? Yes. Speak loudly. Okay. All right. So emphasizing the, the present tense of the verb, that you may continue to believe. Okay. All right. So not everyone is going to heaven. Who, who isn't going to heaven? Okay, so sinners, people who do not confess Jesus as, as Lord. Are there people on this planet who deny that Jesus came in the flesh, that he, uh, that, that he is the Son of God come in the flesh? Okay, so congratulations then. You have just, you have just passed judgment on billions of people on this planet. Well, Yes, yes, we can. We, we, we can judge based on the criteria of Scripture and what we see, what we understand. You, you, we can judge. We need to be careful what kind of judgment we use, right? We, we, we've talked about Matthew 7 recently a couple of times. Judge not that you be not judged because of the same measure of you use, it will be measured against you. And then later in that, in that same chapter, in Matthew 7, Jesus says, I think it's verses 13 and 14, you shall know them by their fruits. So we, we do have uh, the ability, the permission, to look at how people are living, to look at the tenets of Scripture and, and pass judgment. Doesn't mean we're sending them, like I was facetiously saying, but, but it's, it, isn't, it, isn't it hard to imagine? If we, if we have as just a basic requirement you must believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. There are literally billions of people on this planet who do not believe that. Yes, sir. Two things. I, I think I take a little more holistic view, um, and I look more closely at the the scriptures that talk about you know sinners don't go to heaven. Um, you, um, you know, and I think there's a difference between having a sin. Okay, let, let me repeat that. There's a difference between ha having a sin and being a sinner. Okay. Like, if my dog got hurt and I bandaged his leg, I wouldn't claim to be a veterinarian, right? The fact that I have medically helped a animal does not make the balance of my life characterized by the practice of veterinary medicine. Okay. Similarly, So 
Yeah, uh, maybe a dentures commercial, and you and you're you're jealous. Okay. Okay. No, there Okay, all right. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think you're right. And I also believe that a lot of what I grew up with was it's either black or it's white. You're either clean and pristine or you're a vile sinner. And I, I know I'm exaggerating, but that, that's what I grew up with. Did anyone else feel that way growing up? That I mean, you just, you just had to be careful. A checklist. You didn't get all checked in order to change, and there was no hope for you. All right, and that's where we started last week um, with, with the, the subtitle. I don't have it. In, I don't have lesson one in front of me. I don't remember the subtitle, but but the guy had this really long, ridiculous subtitle, and he's saying one of those is that that you just feel guilty all the time. God doesn't want you to feel guilty all the time. Now, we may carefully. Look at those who deny Jesus is the Christ and say, I'm not the judge, God's the judge, but I don't think they're heaven bound because of this fundamental issue. Um, who does get to choose, though? That's right, Jesus. Uh, and so you were looking at my notes, I think. Uh, just as the Hebrew writer says, what we often quote this verse, uh, verse 27. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this comes the judgment. And then we stop there. But here's the next verse. Here's the completion of the sentence. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, so somebody died to redeem our sins, Christ will appear a second time not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. What does he mean by that? Jesus isn't going to come a second time to deal with sin. He's already done it. He's already died on the cross of Calvary. And when he comes a second time, it is to claim his own, to take us to heaven. Uh, another passage that certainly indicates that judgment is, is around the corner. They will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. God is going to judge us. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10 says that we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, the judgment seat in, uh, in, in the ancient world was called a, a bema. It was, it was this raised platform. Pilate was on his bema, his high place. We talked about that recently in our, in our John study as Jesus is being lifted up higher and higher until he finally made the cross. Uh, but what he says is, we're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ before him and, and receive what is due for what he has done in the body. All right. Whether good or evil. What I don't want to do is give the impression in any way that we are going to justify sin without the blood of Jesus. And we're going to excuse it somehow, and, and we can just do whatever we want, live however we want. That's one end of the pendulum, but the other end is, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to be perfectly sinless at the end. How about this? When, when somebody lives however they want, and then at the last minute, at the, uh, at the 11th hour, they obey the gospel. Just made it. Is that going to work? It's God's business. Okay. Well, and of course, the thief on the cross acknowledged Jesus as Lord and uh, acknowledged his own sin. So, yeah, there, there's a lot going on there. He, he, it wasn't just, oh, I happen to be crucified next to Jesus. And uh, he, he knew who Jesus was. Just so much more we would like to know about that fella. Uh, and, and also, he did rail against Jesus at one point. Just so much we don't know. I'm sorry, I'm getting off on the thief on the cross there for a second. Go ahead. All right, your, your grandfather. All right, 
you, you sure Buddy wasn't an agnostic? Uh, agnostic? Okay. And he was surrounded by Christians. His wife was a faithful Christian all of her life, and she passed away. And your, your grandfather just kind of held it a distance, held the Lord at a distance. When he obeyed the gospel at 95 years of age, what did he do every day? read his Bible, had his Bible read to him, prayed. He truly was committed. That's an 11th hour conversion. But again, it's, it's God who will be the judge, uh, not us. All right, I've got on the screen, 1 John 3, we're going to look at several verses now. Uh, 1 John 3, 19 through 21, and I, I'm presenting it with a, a slight paraphrase. The New Living Paraphrase is what I would call it. Uh, the New Living Translation. They, they uh, really smooth out the, the, uh, the English. And they're trying to be helpful. Let, let's see if it jars us a little bit and, and helps us as we think about what, what these verses are, are trying to, to say to us. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. And he knows everything. Dear friends, if you don't feel guilty, if we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence. How do you feel about that wording of 1 John 3, 19 through 21? Ma'am? Yeah, here's a more literal rendering. You can follow it on the screen. By this, we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. That's a more literal rendering. And I, I, I want to be able to see the Bible as it literally reads. John Mark, do you have your hand up? Yes. Wow. I I no, you, you go right ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. So well, <laughs> we'll definitely let God be the judge of that. Yes, sir. Okay, godly sorrow leads to repentance. All right. I, I think we're all on the same page, and uh, we're, we're going to continue to walk through 1 John and, and just make three or four points of application. One, walk like Jesus. You want to know that you are heaven bound? Then walk like Jesus. That is an interpretation of, of the word uh, that is used here. Uh, abiding and, and walking um, is translated here as just living your life. And this is again the, uh, the New International, uh, New International, the New Living Translation. 1 John 2, 5 and 6. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. This is how we know we are living in him. There's that word know. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. You disagree with any of that? I mean, that's scripture after all. And it's really trying to help us get the sense of what John is saying. It's very emphatic uh, as that one lived, as Jesus lived, as he walked, 
That's how we should walk. The same exact way. Anybody here walk on water? Jesus walked perfectly. What are we supposed to do in response to that? Imitate him. Strive to walk perfectly and not beat ourselves up because we're, we are filled with self-doubt and, and whatnot. Yes, sir? Okay. So this is a lifelong in endeavor. Raul? Yeah. Okay. There are people who I admire greatly who are very faithful to the Lord and they haven't been baptized for the remission of their sins. We believe that the Bible teaches we must be clothed with Christ in baptism. And it's not just simply in uh, an outward sign of an inward confession. What, what about those folks? Good, godly people. Yeah. We, we have to do the best that we know and leave the rest to God. I, I don't want you to walk out of here thinking, oh no. I don't know if I'm going to heaven. Uh, I, would, I would contend that baptism is an integral part of that. And, and so the Gospel of John was written to people who needed to believe Jesus is the Christ. Got that. First John is to people who already have become Christians. And I, he wants you to know you have eternal life. So that's what we're focusing on. Uh, you were look, talking about First John 3... Uh, verses 6 through 9, about, um, and it's, it's trying to denote the, uh, the ongoing sense here in verse 6. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or, or known him. You may think you know him, but really, if, if you're not living right, you don't know him. And, and John's language is very black and white. That's his style. Uh, here's... First John 3, verse 10. So now we can tell who are children of God and who are children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. Does this mean that we can live righteously and be children of God, not children of the devil? And he also emphasizes a lot in this letter about uh, loving people uh, who we have seen and, and do see face to face. Do what's right. And, and the common thread in our, in our comments tonight is this is a, a lifelong endeavor. It's, it's something that is characteristic of us for years and years. We are striving to be like Christ, to imitate him, and we're going to get better at it. At least I hope so. And that, that's uh, something that, that I like to emphasize in my teaching and preaching. 
we have a, a gracious, loving God who wants to help us in our walk with him. Let me look at this verse with you. First uh, John 5, verse 4. It has three times the concept of overcoming. Uh, the New Living Translation uh, paraphrases these, uh, translates them perfectly legitimately with other terms. But all three of them are the same that are highlighted on the screen. Every child of God overcomes this evil world, and we, and we overcome through our faith. Faith. Wait a minute. Isn't that what Ricardo was just talking about a few minutes ago? Our faith. Our faith in what? In Jesus. Not in ourselves, our faith in ourselves. We, we can be victorious. This concept of, of overcoming is not, does not occur very much in, in New, the New Testament. It most often appears in in um, the Revelation. You remember that? Talking about us overcoming. In all seven of the seven letters to the uh, churches, there's an admonition to overcome, and, and, the, and the verb is also used several times in, in Revelation. 1 John 5, verse 4. Everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Victory and overcoming are the same word. I'll tell you what it is. It's Nike. You put on those shoes and you're supposed to go and be victorious. They're, they're basing their, their logo, well, they're basing the name of the company on the Greek term for victory. That's for free. Isn't that nice? God wants us to be victorious. One of my favorite verses in the Gospel of John is John 16, verse 33. In the world you will have tribulation, Jesus told his apostles. But take heart, be of good cheer. What? I have overcome the world. And here is now 1 John taking what Jesus said and bringing it back up. God wants you to be victorious through your faith. What's that song we sing? Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. What is that based on? John 16, 33, 1 John 5, verse 4. Don't you love it when our, our songs are, are based on, on the words of what we read here? So the overarching message of 1 John is you can know with confidence that you are heaven-bound. And don't ever get sidetracked. Don't give up. I'm going to pluck a verse from 1 Peter, 1 Peter 1. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. You have faith in him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. You need a memory verse? There it is right there. 1 Peter 1, verse 8. Right there at the very beginning of the letter. We need to study 1 John, don't we? There's, I mean, we just tried in 40 minutes. Uh, less than 40 minutes to, to encapsulate some of the teachings there. But, it, but there are so many uh, uh, reasons to have faith. It starts off with that beautiful prologue, verses 1 through 4. It's actually one long sentence. We have seen Jesus with our own eyes. We heard him, and we are testifying to you that we heard him, that we saw him. John wants to assure us that we are in him. We are in a relationship with him. We abide in the Son. We remain in him. It's that same word that, that Jesus used in John 15 when he talked about how himself as the vine and you are the branches and we abide in him. We can have confidence. Let me read these verses. 1 John 2, 28 and 29. And now, little children, abide in him so that when he appears we may have confidence and not shrink from him in the shame at his coming, in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him. Big emphasis on being born of God, um, being his, his child, and, and that's only through the blood of Jesus. 
1 John 3, 18 through 24, wants to assure us of salvation. I don't see the kids back, so I'm going to go ahead and read these verses, and we'll, we'll close with these. 1 John 3, 18 through 24. Little children, let us not love in word and talk, but in deed and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. See, we can please God. We can please God. This is his commandment that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. So we've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit right there in, uh, in these verses. We can know that we have eternal life. Do you have more assurance tonight? I hope you're reminded of some of these great, great truths. And if you aren't walking out of here tonight with confidence that you are heaven bound, then let's talk. Let's open God's word. Let's talk about your soul salvation because what God wants more than anything is for you to have a relationship with him in heaven but that relationship starts this side of eternity, right now. God wants to have a relationship with you right now. Thanks for uh, being uh, uh, helpful with our uh, question of tonight. And uh, I hope next week's lesson will, will also be in, intriguing to you. We're going to talk about being God's friend. Not just pleasing God, but being his friend. All right, thank you. I appreciate it.
four songs on the board, 247. Ready to sing, let's sing. Here we are, but strain pilgrims here. Our parts are often dim. But to cheer us on our journey still, we sing that wayside hymn. Yonder over the rolling river, where the shining mansion rise, soon will be our home forever. And the smile of the blessed giver, God and all our longing eyes. Here our feet are often weary on the hills that throng our way. Here the tempest gladly gather, but our hearts within the sea. Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansion rides. Soon we'll be our home forever, and the smile of the blessed giver guide all our longing life. Here our souls are often fearful of the pilgrims lurking for, but the Lord is our defender, and he tells us we may know Yonder over the rolling river where the shining mansion rise Soon will be our home forever and the smile of the blessed gave her glad as all our longing eyes. Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth a move can stand. There's a hope and things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hope and things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in Him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring. Second, still more closely to him cling. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes and things eternal. Hold unchanging hand when your journey is completed if to God you have been true fear and fright your home in glory your in rapture soul will view unchanging hand hold to God's unchanging hand build your hopes and things eternal hold to God's unchanging hand final song tonight home of the soul 243 And for the prize we have striven after labors are all, rest to our souls will be given 
on the eternal shore. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care, happy and bright, Jesus is there, he is the light, oft in the storm, lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee, beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Yes, a sweet rest is remaining for the true children of God, where there will be no complaining, never a chastening rod. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care, happy and bright. Jesus is there, he is the light. Oft in the storm, lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee. Beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Soon the bright homeland adorning, we shall behold the glad dawn. Lean on the Lord till the morning, trust till the night is gone. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam, free from all care, happy and bright, Jesus is there, he is the light. Hocked in the storm, lonely are we, striving for home, longing for thee. Beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Announcements. Good evening, everyone, and we sure do appreciate the visitors that we have, and I want you to know that your um, presence is uh, very welcome, and you're welcome to come be with us uh, any time that we're meeting. Um, as far as uh, announcements that are uh, uh, of interest here for those members here, we want to continue to remem remember um, uh, Joyce and the passing of Herb Bueller. He was in um, um, institutional care for quite a while, and uh, Joyce took him took care of him for a very long time. So we want to remember her. Also, Ray Torno's uh, mother, Christine Torno, also the grandmother of uh, uh, Shannon, um, and uh, Shane uh, passed away, and her. Funeral services will be um, after the holidays uh, in early January. About our sick, Mike Garcia got good news with his uh, uh, cancer surgery, and it looks like that they removed all, all of his cancer and um, won't need to um, have any further treatment. But he will have to be monitored uh, very closely for a while. Uh, Maggie Perez is still awaiting the results of her biopsy on, on uh, a growth that they have uh, discovered on her liver. So we want to keep her in, in our prayers as she awaits that uh, news. Linda Cargall is continuing to recover uh, at home from her uh, cancer surgery. And um, Hazel Lassiter is, uh, was here with us uh, this past Sunday. So she, she's improving. Uh, Amanda Drum's mother, uh, Jerry Chester, um, had surgery earlier in the week and she did well. And Amanda will be with her our, um, uh, probably till mid January. 
Uh, also, let's continue to remember that we have um, a ladies' Bible class on Tuesdays. Um, that won't start up again until January 23rd, is what the note I have here says. Um, there are some of the holiday gift bags that are uh, there in the foyer. If, if uh, you're one of the recipients, make sure that you pick up your bag. Uh, thanks to Victoria Garcia uh, as she uh, put those um, together and made that effort come together. Um, is there any other announcements that we need to be? Oh, one more. Um, we'll be having the winter gathering, our soup and singing at our house uh, January the 13th, so remember that. Anything else? Uh, yeah. Okay, missing cell phone. Uh, there's one in the pew back there. So, um, if there's if there's nothing else, we'll be uh, dismissed in a word of prayer. with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this, this opportunity to come here tonight to, to study your word, to sing songs, to be together. Uh, we thank you for the study we got to have, uh, the time that we get to consider whether, you know, our relationship with you and our relationship and our and the, the thought that your, your son has died for us, that he's up there at your right hand, that he's petitioning for us, that he's been through the same things we've been through and we have an advocate there down on us and, and uh, guiding us through our life. We, we thank you for the Bible that we have, the hope of heaven that we have, the, the institution of the church here, so we have like-minded people helping us get through this life. We pray for those that have been mentioned, that have lost loved ones, those that are sick, that are dealing with the hard things in their life. We pray that people here can reach out to those people and assist in any way they can. We thank you for all the things that you bless us with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.